Hey folks, welcome back. So it is uh, day four of the four day lead generation challenge. So uh, this time this is all about um, follow up. Uh, basically, so we've gone through a process of what sort of content we need to be putting out there to attract people into reading our things, uh, how we can be a bit more consistent about it, um, the reasons why we need to be consistent in terms of the numbers. So now it's all about follow up. So it really pains me whenever I see somebody who says, oh, I'm really struggling, I'm not generating enough leads, I'm not getting enough clients. And then you sit, realize that um, basically they're just dropping the ball and they're not actually, um, they don't have the systems and the processes in place in order to ensure that when somebody raises a hand and says, hey, I'm interested in your product or service, that they then have a robust system in order to follow it up. Now, as we know, most people need several touch points. So again, I actually start tracking people very early on in my process and start serving them relevant information right from the off. Um, not just giving them the one thing that they've asked for, but then maybe giving them two or three other things. So that might mean introducing them into my um, Facebook group, or sending them a link to a video, which I think might be able to help them, or sending them my assessment form, or whatever it might be. But the idea is that, again, we've got to be consistent with our follow-up processes as well. And actually, I, I've been through the headache and the pain of having to um, get things like CRM platforms set up and automation set up. Um, but now I've done it, I'm a huge advocate. It works incredibly well. Um, in terms of just getting that workflow organized. Um, and it's something which I think I'm gonna start introducing in terms of doing work, more workshops and things like that around producing more content around. Um, but I just wanna show you a couple of uh, two tools which I think will probably help you from a follow-up perspective, one of which I touched upon um, during the last um, video. But again, this one, um, uh, so this one is Linked Helper basically, and you'll notice if um, there's a little um, link next to um, my post likes and comments on LinkedIn. And basically what I've got the opportunity to do here is to add these, um, uh, the people who've liked my post, um, basically add them uh, onto my linked helper list and to do stuff with them. So I could send them a message, I could endorse them, I could do any number of different things basically because they're already engaged in a piece of my content. So it makes sense for me to follow up with them with something. So a simple endorsement um, probably is all it might take. So uh, let's add those guys to the list. Done, and then um, under linked helper it should have uh, somewhere in there it will say, yeah, we've, we've collected X number of um, people and so I could go, go through and automatically now endorse those contacts that I've, I've collected. Um, so it's just a neat little way of following up within the platform that somebody's actually liked your content within. And there are other tools that you can do that um, with things like Twitter, so sending out a thank you for following me um, link in Twitter, maybe with a link to your website or a helpful PDF download or a video or something like that. Um, on, on YouTube, I'm sure you can automate the process if somebody subscribes to you, you can follow them, tr subscribe to them back, or I don't know, um, uh, somewhere following them up. Um, certainly on Facebook, um, there's lots of tools. Although, I mean, the latest GDPR rules means that this is gonna get harder and harder, um, and there's gonna be a lot of, um, uh, I think, I think it's gonna change the way automation works, but again, there'll be ways of doing it legitimately, but just by speeding the process up, like Linked Helper, I could go in there and, and um, sort of endorse all of those people who've liked that page manually, but it would just take a long time. So why can't I get a machine to go in there and do that for me? I don't see that as necessarily a bad thing. Um, so look within the tools that you've got to see how you can follow up on their initial engagement. Second thing is look at getting a CRM platform in place. So um, I use Insightly. So um, uh, basically, um, this this is um, there's things called opportunities set up on Insightly, and um, th this is just a way of ensuring that you can um, like I add all of my um, people who fill out my assessment form into this um, pipeline chart, this opportunity um, opportunity pipeline here. So it starts off with assessment form completed, consultation booked, consultation sat, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and it goes so it goes all of the way through basically, um, taking them through a pipeline. Now again. I've set up in Todoist, um, and I don't know if you saw this earlier on, but I set up in my Todoist a daily task for check Insightly tasks. So all I've got to remember to do is go into Insightly, and that reminds me to go and check in, um, uh, to log into Todoist, 
and that reminds me to go and check into Insightly on a daily basis. And I know that the two things that I've got to look at are opportunities and tasks, and that's it. So I then know that within my, um, within my tasks, um, I've, got, um, I've got things such as a follow-up email, um, and I saw this and thought view email. I've got to make sure that the person who booked their um, assessment form has gone on to actually booked, sorry, who's filled out the assessment form has actually gone on to um, book a consultation with me so that I don't drop any balls anywhere. I also get um, emails directly from Insightly, Insightly to remind me to do these tasks as well. Um, and also, once I've actually gone through and sat down, um, sat somebody through a consultation and said, put them into the next stage, it automatically creates all of these follow-up steps for me. Um, so, and it does it for, um, you know, I think there's five different follow-up emails I've got to send out. So ranging from like a few days to a month to three months to six months to nine months. Um, now, if I didn't have this system or this tool in place, I would have to manually remember all of these people and remember to send them out stuff or maybe have an, a, a mailing list like in, in um, MailChimp and hope that just because they're in there, when I send out my mass email to everybody, that they somehow reconnect with me. Whereas actually through Insightly, it means I can send a much more personalized response to each one of these people. I don't have to remember to do it, Insightly remembers for me. And I can just, um, there's email templates set up in here. So if I click into email templates, um, I've got several emails um, set up already. So I've got a follow-up email which just says, I uh, hope you're keeping well and busy. I've been several weeks since your initial consultation. How is everything going? Um, have you made much progress? And don't forget to join my fearless Facebook group. So um, 24 sent, 24 delivered. Average open rate, 75%. That's not great. Average click-through rate, 16%. Now, on MailChimp, you'd probably be expecting um, a an open rate of about 20 to 40% if you were lucky and a click-through rate um, of about two to five percent it would be pretty appalling so this is my typical follow-up after i've just sat a consultation as well 42 emails sent 42 delivered 71 percent open rate average click-through rate 21 percent. so that's five five to ten times greater with a personalized email response than it is through using something like mailchimp so why aren't we tracking through all of the leads through our business now equally what I could also do is whenever somebody signs up to an event, provided they sign a disclaimer or whatever to say that they're happy for me to send them further information, um, I could just um, put reminders into um, into Insightly. And yes, okay, it's a slightly long win longer winded process, but if you're getting between five and 10 times the click-through rate that you would normally get, um, this is a great way of, um, of nurturing any leads who are still in your pipeline and increasing your conversions. And I would say actually it's it's not about getting as many leads as you possibly can because those are vanity metrics. The sanity metrics are how many of those you actually go on to convert and turn into paying clients. So um, there's a couple of very simple tools there. I know I've kept it, I wanted to keep it kind of short just to kind of give you an idea about um, the sorts of things you should be doing to nurture leads and follow up on them to increase your chance of converting um, rather than just focusing on like how much content you should be putting out, what happens next, which is the most important thing. So um, if you've got any comments, questions or whatever, then make sure you drop them into the comments box. Always happy to answer those questions. And that is the four day lead generation challenge done. I will be putting some other lead generation type content into the group. Um, because as I've been actually making these four videos, there's several other things that have cropped up, which I think may be useful just around things like lead magnets and sales letters and stuff like that. So I'll be posting those into the Fearless Facebook group, um, Fearless Crew group, which is my members group. So, um, uh, and if you've got any more questions about lead generation, then please do um, fire them over.